Hello and welcome to a Tuesday live right here on the morning after on Sports Grid and Sirius XM Channel 159. That's the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM all across the Spiz Grizz Network. That's Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. Thank you for joining us here on this Tuesday, TMA. Ton to get to in a jam-packed two hours. We bring you up until 11 a.m. Eastern time. The hunt for October, 35 or so more games across Major League Baseball. We'll break down everything in the bigs, but it's also a Grand Slam week up in Queens at Arthur Ashe Stadium, the 2022 U.S. Open, the final Grand Slam event on the tennis calendar, and the greatest athlete of all time, Serena Williams, on the court last night. We'll break down what happened in her opening round matchup. We'll go around the National Football League, single-digit days left until the start of the 2022 NFL regular season, including a big day across the league It's cut day. You have to bring your rosters down to that 53-man threshold. And of course, it's not the morning after. And I am not Big Ten Ben. Ben Stevens without some college football discussion as well. Two days away from the start of week number one of CFB. We begin in Major League Baseball. Somebody please get on the horn, call Aaron Boone, and tell him the New York Yankees are playing two of the worst teams in the American League right now on their California swing. Over the weekend, a four-game set up in Northern California by the Bay against the Oakland Athletics. Major League Baseball's second worst team. And the Yankees dropped the final two games of that set. And then yesterday, in Anaheim, down in Southern California, the Yankees with Frankie Montas on the bump booked as a minus-184 road favorite and they get upset by the Halos, the Angels winning at home by a final score of 4-3. to three. So now the Pinstripes have lost three straight games against Oakland and the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, teams that are a combined 40 games below 500 at this moment. Again, a minus-184 favorite with Frankie Montas on the bump is a dicey situation right now since Montas joined the Yankees from the Oakland Athletics. Montas yesterday, six innings of work, Four earned runs given up on eight hits allowed. Frankie Montas in his five starts as a member of the New York Yankees has given up a combined 20 earned runs. The Yankees in his five starts, two and three straight up. And in those three losses, Frankie Montas has given up 16 combined earned runs. That happened. And Aaron Judge hit his 50th home run of the year. Anthony Rizzo got back with the long ball as well. His 29th bomb. Aaron Judge hit 50, his 50th home run of the season last night. He has four long balls in the last seven games. And the Yankees still found a way to lose. Aaron Judge had a home run prop for a season-long total. They updated at the All-Star break on the FanDuel Sportsbook. It was 61 and a half. He came out of the gates in the second half on an absolute tear. It seemed like he would go past this number of 61 and a hook, being 61, a huge number in New York Yankees and Major League Baseball lore. Of course, the number of home runs Roger Maris hit, 61. That is what some may consider the official home run record, not dealing with the steroids error, but it seems that Aaron Judge is going to stay well under that number right now, the under with a heavy amount of juice at the moment on the FanDuel Sportsbook, but Aaron Judge continues to do good things with the bat. Again, his fourth home run in the last seven games for the pinstripes yesterday, his 50th of the season, but all coming in a 4-3 loss for the Yankees on the road in Anaheim, the Yankees' third straight loss at the moment. A welcome to our Sports Grid Radio audience. The opening hour of the morning after, live right here all across the grid, Sirius XM Channel 159. All of our terrestrial radio affiliates now in the fold as well. I am Ben Stevens. The Yankees, despite the three straight losses and the struggles in the second half of this Major League Baseball regular season, still have the third best price to win a World Series right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Plus 450 is that number on New York. 70 cents behind the Astros, who have the second best number at plus 380. The Dodgers remain the favorites at plus 300. So the Yankees, 70 cents behind the Strohs in the World Series market, but only 45 cents behind Houston to win an American League pennant. Now, the Dodgers remain the favorites to win a World Series. The Dodgers have 89 wins this year. The Dodgers are 51 games above 500, but the Dodgers dealt a blow yesterday. Their ace all year long, the Catman, Tony Gonsolin, now on the shelf, the 15-day IL. Dave Roberts said, though, yesterday, the manager for Los Angeles, he expects Gonsolin to only miss 
two starts, but he's put on the IL with forearm stiffness at the moment. Tony Gonsolin this year, 16-1, and one, tied for the most wins in all of Major League Baseball at 16, a 2-1-0 ERA, the second best in all of the bids. In the last five days, we have seen both Justin Verlander and Tony Gonsolin be what might be slightly injured right now. No word on Verlander in terms of the IL, but Gonsolin now on the shelf. And Tony Gonsolin was supposed to start the four-game series finale for the Dodgers yesterday in Miami. But even without Tony Gonsolin on the bump, the Dodgers win another baseball game. Again, their 89th victory of this season, 3-2 to two in extras in 10 innings against the Fish in Miami yesterday. Frederick Freeman, a fielder's choice game-winning RBI that scored Cody Bellinger for that final run. Freddie Freeman yesterday, two for five. Trey Turner, two for five. The two Major League Baseball leaders in hits this year continue to add it up for Los Angeles. So Tony Gonsolin on the shelf for right now, but not expected at the moment to miss all that much time for LA. The Dodgers remain the favorites to win the National League at plus 140 and thus the favorites to win the World Series at plus 300. We go around the National Football League. Up next, news and notes you need to know. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and The morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a four and a In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Disappointing because of the lack of offense in times, including striking out a ton. The highest K rate against righties all year long in Major League Baseball at nearly 27% in the last month. The second highest at 26%. Now, Frankie Montas has not gone over his strikeout prop today of six and a half since joining the Yankees, but it's plus money against the highest striking out team in all of MLB over six and a half. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. I think it's absolutely reasonable to think that the positive COVID test that ultimately came for Drew Locke cost him the chance at this job. Eliminating a week of action and perhaps was a little off platform going into this game against Dallas. But honestly, as someone that said the entire way Drew Locke should be the week one starter, after this performance here, more than understandable, to me at least, why they gave the nod here to Geno Smith. Only on Sports Grid. Sports Professor Rick Harrell with your Sports News Minute. Last preseason game. But here's an interesting anomaly. These two teams play in the same stadium. Chargers and the Rams do it in L.A. But why are the Giants, according to Forbes, number three value in the league, about 14% increase, nearly $5 billion. Yet the Jets, number eight in the league, about $4 billion. Well, what's the difference? Especially because the revenue is shared about 85% television tickets with every team in the league. What's the disparity? Maybe because the Jets haven't won since Namath days. Maybe because the Giants have won twice with Super Bowls. Maybe because the Giants are the long-standing legacy. I've been here first. Who knows? Value is only what somebody pays for it. These guys aren't ready to sell. Bottom line again, games aren't won in the boardroom, they're won on the field.
Back right here on the morning after, live on this Tuesday on Sports Grid. I'm Ben Stevens. Thank you for joining us on Sirius XM Channel 159 and all across the Sports Grid network. Today is a big day across the National Football League. It's a tough day for many in the industry because you have to cut down your roster to just 53 players. The official closing, pretty much, of training camp before all teams around the NFL turn the page to getting ready for the regular season. Game week is on the horizon. Nine days away until the start of the 2022 NFL regular season in Los Angeles at the site of Super Bowl 56, where we ended last year to start a new season. The LA Rams, the reigning Super Bowl champs, host the Buffalo Bills. So a big day across the National Football League. Now the Rams played in their home stadium in Super Bowl 56 because they got past the Niners in the NFC Championship game. But it was oh so close. And the starting quarterback for San Francisco that led them to an NFC title game appearance only two years after leading them to a Super Bowl appearance in Super Bowl 54 was Jimmy Garoppolo. But it's Trey Lance's time in San Francisco. We expected Jimmy G to move at some point throughout this offseason. He had shoulder surgery. Teams around the league needed to see how healthy that right throwing shoulder was going to be. But there wasn't a whole lot of market movement in favor of Jimmy G. And then yesterday, a bit of a surprise. The Niners giving him a one-year deal. Jimmy Garoppolo is staying in San Francisco. Is this now not an awkward situation slightly in that Niners locker room within that organization does it show maybe on behalf of the organization that Trey Lance is not necessarily a hundred percent ready to go or is it because they just couldn't ship Jimmy Garoppolo anywhere and their asking price was too high and the market value wasn't all that great for Jimmy G regardless of how you feel about it it gives San Francisco a safety valve that if Trey Lance entering year number two in the National Football League is not all that good, maybe you insert Jimmy G. But if that's the case, then have you lost the promise of the guy you traded up to the number three overall pick in last year's draft to get a very confusing situation for the San Francisco 49ers? But you can see what Jimmy Garoppolo is capable of now there's a lot of detractors on Jimmy G a lot of people that highlight he's not going to win you football games he's not a top half starting quarterback in the National Football League well Jimmy Garoppolo gets the Niners to where they need to go maybe not because of his prowess as the quarterback but certainly not in spite of Jimmy Garoppolo over 3,800 passing yards last year a 68.3 percent completion percentage 20 touchdowns to 12 interceptions not the most gaudy numbers by any means but he started 15 of the 17 games for the Niners in the regular season. The other two, Trey Lance started and appeared in six games in total. An interesting situation now for the Niners because as it pertains to Trey Lance, it's not a second-year quarterback that they're going to give the opportunity to find his way in the National Football League. If they only win six or seven games, whatever. It's a working experiment for Trey Lance. No, the Niners are minus 225 to make the postseason. San Francisco has the second best price to win a competitive NFC West. The Niners are incredibly talented across the entire roster. Maybe just some questions around that quarterback position. A very interesting situation in San Francisco. And it should be noted that Jimmy Garoppolo's new contract now with San Fran includes some no trade clauses and things like that in the workings of the contract if he is to be traded before this upcoming trade deadline later following week 10 or 11 of the NFL regular season he would have to sign off the Niners would have to sign off on any trade discussion in potential to grab Jimmy Garoppolo and put him elsewhere in the National Football League a very interesting situation now the Niners have ahead for 2022 elsewhere around the National Football League A very scary scenario on Sunday evening for rookie running back for the Washington Commanders, Brian Robinson Jr., a member of the Alabama team that won an SEC championship game a season ago that appeared in the national title. Brian Robinson was shot multiple times in an attempted carjacking in Washington, D.C. on Sunday evening. However, all reports around Brian Robinson is that he had surgery yesterday afternoon. It went very well. He has been in communication with commanders, organization, all the personnel, and head coach Ron Rivera. So some optimism for what has been a very 
scary situation. Brian Robinson Jr. posting yesterday afternoon on his Instagram story that surgery went well. He appreciates all of the prayers. We hope he can come back as soon as possible. Obviously, his health takes precedent, but Ron Rivera did say yesterday to reporters that they hope Brian Robinson Jr. can be cleared at some time this season to return to the football field because that is what he wants at the moment. Now, as we look at Washington moving forward in 2022, the Commanders open up the season at home as more than a field goal favorite against the Jacksonville Jaguars. They are laying three in a hook at home, week number one against the Jags. That total at 43 and a half. It will be the debut in the regular season for Carson Wentz as a men member of the Commanders. The last time Carson Wentz was on an NFL football field, he was a 15-point favorite as the quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts on the road against those very Jaguars. They needed just a win, not a cover, just an outright win to get past Jacksonville to clinch a berth in the AFC postseason, and they lost the game by two touchdowns. Outright. Yes, I have my doubts on Carson Wentz. So why is Washington a three and a half point favorite? Does that say more about the commander's outlook for 2022 or the Jacksonville Jaguars? The Jags were 0-4, winless this preseason. I understand preseason results are not all that important unless you're a bad football team with a very young roster trying to make improvements and get better. Not the first preseason Doug Peterson was hoping for as the head coach in Duval County. Again, the Commanders, a three-and-a-half-point favorite as of right now for week number one. That's just about a week and a half away. As we continue going around the National Football League, our final thoughts on the preseason that was. Because again, today is cut day in the National Football League, trimming down your roster to just 53 players. We will see tons of movement around the NFL, and we already have in these early morning hours. Now, the Pittsburgh Steelers played in the final preseason game of this season in the National Football League. They won 19-9 at home against the Detroit Lions, covering as a six-and-a-half-point favorite. And we saw some of their stars out on the field, namely the reigning defensive player of the year in T.J. Watt and Deontay Johnson, the wide receiver on the other side of the football. They paid a ton in a contract extension this offseason. Both left the game early. Both went to the locker room. But as Mike Tomlin told reporters for CBS during the game broadcast, he was not overly concerned. If it was a regular season game, TJ Watt and Deontay Johnson might be back in that football game. But of course, the preseason finale means nothing. Now, here's the very interesting thing about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Again, we have harped on this point many, many times throughout this offseason into training camp. The Steelers have a seven and a half win total. In Mike Tomlin's 15 years at the helm of this Steelers organization, they have gone over that number every year. At least eight wins in all 15 seasons. In the last two years, Pittsburgh has made the playoffs. The case in 2020 was because of how good that steel curtain defense was. Tied for the fifth best scoring defense in the National Football League two seasons ago. But you see the regression last year. 22nd in terms of scoring defense. Their total defense a season ago was the sixth worst in the National Football League. They had the third best total defense from a yardage perspective in 2020. And yet they still made the postseason both years. If that defense for Pittsburgh can get back close to those 2020 levels, keep an eye on the Steelers, who right now have the longest odds within the AFC North. The Baltimore Ravens remain the short favorite, short in comparison in terms of the Cincinnati Bengals. It will be a divisional duel for a debut in 2022 between those Bengals and the Steelers. At the home of the reigning AFC champion, Cincinnati Bengals, week number one of this season. And right now, the Bengals, a six and a half point favorite. It is tied with multiple other games, but it is the largest spread for week one right now on the NFL slate, the Bengals, a six and a half point favorite in their opener against the Steelers. That's the start of a new season. The playoffs of the WNBA continue tomorrow. We get a breakdown with JY next. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time.
overtime decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the Pro Football Doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The morning after. You see their odds to win the division. They will certainly be a playoff team one way or the other, probably hosting in that opening round. What do you give for St. Louis's chances, DRS, of making a deep run come October? Looks like the Cardinals are playing their best baseball right now. And if we're going to get pitching, particularly from their starting frontline pitchers, anywhere close to what they're doing now, they have a legitimate chance because they have those power arms in the back end that I got to tell you again, that one through nine, they run out. The there. Sports Grid Network. The early line. It's fair to say that this is the most impressive thing he has been able to do as a member of the Chicago Bears. It does pique the interest. And also, you know, we can always make jokes on the Chicago Bears because, quite frankly, I don't think they're going to be a very good football team this year. But I have prefaced that, Kevin, by saying it's not going to be Justin Fields' fault. The only fault's going to be is if they can protect him. And if he feels like he needs to be Superman, does that mean running a little bit more than he should be doing? Only on Sports Grid. The final day off before the WNBA semifinal series resumes tomorrow. And the final day, sadly, that our coach, James Young, might be joining the morning after for some time because JY has got to go back to educating the youth in the classroom. But JY, before you go back and summer is officially over, we welcome you back on the morning after. One final time to set the stage for the rest now of the WNBA postseason and of course some NBA summer headlines because that never stops as well with JY's favorite team, the New York Knicks. JY, thank you for joining us here on the morning after. You know, Ben, this is just a sad day. You know, the summer is concluding. My beach club time is going to an end. My gray hairs will get longer. My sleep will get shorter. But even mm. when JY's not on the morning after, JY always listens to the morning after. And he'll be delivering picks. The scouting report does not stop just because maybe the appearances on this program become fewer and farther between. But we'll get to that a later time. JY, tomorrow night, we're back in the WNBA postseason. Game one's now in the books and two upsets for both of the lower-seeded teams. The Sun, the upset over the Sky. The Storm, the upset over the Aces. Both on the road on Sunday. We go back to Chicago for game number two tomorrow night between the reigning WNBA champs, the Sky, against the Sun. And as you can see there, JY, Chicago booked still as a four-and-a-half-point home favorite. How does Chicago respond in game two tomorrow against Connecticut? They just got to get better overall play offensively. Only held 
to 63 points. Obviously, Connecticut is a really good defensive team. And if it wasn't for Candace Parker, folks, with 19, 18, 5, 4, and 6 blocks, yep. that would have been a double-digit home loss. they got to get better play out of Allie Quigley. You know, Vandersloot can't go 2 for 8 from the floor. Copper played well, 13 points. Stevens off the bench with only two. Gardner with four. So Candace will probably regress a little bit in regard to her stats because you can't expect her to put up 19, 18, 5, 4, and 6 every game in the playoffs. If she does, just give her the MVP now for the playoffs. But on the flip side, you got to get some of the other players, star players, the Quigleys, the Vandersloots, to shoot the ball much better in game number two. JY, I'm glad you bring up Candace Parker. She's one of the all-time greats in the WNBA. She fills up a stat sheet like nobody else in the history of the sport. 19 points, 18 boards, 5 assists, 6 blocks on Sunday night, and the Sky still lost by 5 points as a 4.5-point home favorite. Candace Parker this postseason has been incredible. She is averaging 15.5 points per game, 13.3 rebounds per game, more than 5.5 assists per game as well. And yet, J.Y., the Sky have played four games. They've won two. They've lost two. Is this concerning for Chicago that Candace Parker is putting up this much in terms of production and they're still losing basketball games? Or are you confident that Candace Parker is playing at an all-time level and that will lead Chicago throughout this postseason run? You know, but anything that Candace Parker does in your career, you just, you know, you, you can't be surprised by it because she's done it year in and year out. She just took her game to another level. It's going to be, like I said, more about the other players in regards to stepping up. Mm. You know, when you look at the props, they're not out by FanDuel now. They'll probably be up at some point tonight, if not tomorrow morning. I would say look for double-digit rebounds out of Candace Parker. If they hang around a 15-and-a-half, 16-and-a-half point, I'm going to stay under that. I expect out of any of them to recover, I expect Vandersloot to be better. But also don't sleep on Kalia Copper. She's the best one-on-one player that they have on the perimeter. She can get a bucket. If you look at it, she only had 13 points. But here's the other thing. She excels in transition. So this has got to be a game where they got to get the ball up the floor a little bit and try to get Copper the ball in space. So I do think they're going to try and play faster and more aggressively and rely on their depth. Look for also Kalia Copper probably to go over a points prop, especially if they bring that thing down to about 16 and a half. JY, so the Sun pull the upset on Sunday night. They steal game number one on the road. A best of five series now in the semis. Five possible scenarios remaining for the series correct score between Connecticut and Chicago. The two shortest numbers plus 240 for the Sky in five. Also for the Sun to win in four games back in Mohegan Sun on Connecticut's home floor. How many more games are we going to get between Chicago and Connecticut? This has five written all over it. You know, and and, and it becomes a really a must-win game for uh, Chicago because you can't expect them to go to the Mohegan Sun Arena and turn and get two and then win the uh, fifth one at home. So, to me, when you look at this game more than anything, you know, I think you go with the Sky, even if you want to go on the money line and deal with that. You know, obviously, uh, you know, it's minus 205. So, I mean, it's not a great value. But in regard to the series, I see this going five games. I think you get a split coming out of here, and you get another split coming out of Connecticut with game number five in Chicago. We've talked Mm. about it. There's times where you can get value by splitting your bet. Here it is. Chicago 3-2, Connecticut 3-2. Now, if you want to take a chance to say that you don't think that Connecticut is going to win on the road, then you go Connecticut 3-1, Chicago 3-2, still Mm. them over plus two, uh, better than two to one odds, so then you still can come out with plus money if either uh, thing hits. Some money line opportunities, pretty much, then, for that potential winner-take-all game number five back in Chicago. It should be noted, the Sun now the series' outright favorite at minus 164. They got the upset in game number one on the road, as did the Seattle Storm on Sunday out in the desert in Las Vegas. A a six-and-a-half-point dog. Seattle wins outright 
against the Aces. Right now, JY Las Vegas still booked as a five and a half point favorite tomorrow night against Seattle. What do you need to see out of the league's top seed now in the WNBA playoffs for Las Vegas to get that bounce back, bounce back spot tomorrow night against Seattle? Very simple. I want you to remember these numbers, folks. 11 for 33. That is what Asia Wilson and uh, Plum, Kelsey Plum, shot in game number one, and they lost by three. You're not going to get the two of them locked down like that again in this series. You may have one go off. You may have one, you know, score a little bit less. But I expect a huge bounce back performance, especially if you look at someone like Asia Wilson, who, you know, because she plays in the low blocks, she is going to, you know, that's a little bit easier to get scores as opposed to out in the perimeter. 76-73, folks. Low scoring game between these two. I expect yep. more offensive fireworks, especially out of Wilson and Plum. That total is 169 and a half for tomorrow night in Las Vegas. And coach, it's interesting to see how the odds stack up for the remainder of this best of five series between Seattle and Vegas. Because of the game one upset, the storm now minus 122 to win this series outright. But the shortest possible outcome in the series correct score is Vegas in five. That's 3-2 at plus 2-10. What should we expect then, JY, the rest of the way between the Storm and the Aces? Kind of sounds uh, similar to the other semifinals. I think this is go five. And it's one of these things where if you look at it going five games, you got to lock yourself into the fact that Las Vegas should be able to win on their home floor in a game number five. But if, it, if we get a situation where... Uh, you know, it can go four. It's going to go four in regards to Seattle. I don't see Vegas as good as they are winning three straight games to close out this series. So here's where your value is, is again, splitting it up two ways. Now, I did say this a while ago. I had a feeling, I had a feeling that Seattle was going to win this title. We've talked about it on network. I just think the stars are aligned. We talked about it last week. The Mamba out moment for Sue Bird would be her winning a championship. They were 5-1 to one before, I think, before the series started or before the playoffs started. They're down to 2.5-1. to one. So if you're looking to get on it, you may want to get on it now because if they win game two, they become the favorite to win a WNBA title. And Seattle is the favorite in that series outright price correlate the markets. All four teams at this moment, because of those game one upsets, all within a dollar of each other to win the WNBA championship. All right, JY to the NBA summer. RJ Barrett extended by the Knicks last night, the rookie contract extension, four years upwards of $120 million. What does this say about RJ Barrett's place within the Knicks organization at the moment? That they want him. Now, you got to remember one thing, folks. There has been movement towards a trade up until Monday night, and Utah did want RJ. So it'll be interesting to see. But now here's the key thing, folks. Two things to know about. One, rookie deals have a poison pill. So it's a poison pill that's going to make it harder to trade. But at least now Utah has him locked up. If they want to trade for RJ, mm. I don't think this is over. Listen, the Jazz don't have leverage. They've been playing it in the media. No one is going is fighting for it. It's New York or bus for Donovan Mitchell's. Nick, stay patient. Try to hold on to more draft compensation. I still think at the end of the day, Donovan Mitchell will be a New York Nick. You heard it from JY right there. RJ Barrett extended by the Knicks, but a piece of many trade conversations at the moment around the NBA. JY, I hope you had a great summer, my man. Enjoy getting back in the classroom. We'll miss you here on the morning after. Oh, man. Hey, I got a couple of beach days left. Time to get busy. <laughs> Good stuff, JY. We, we'll go to the break. We're coming back on the morning after up next.
might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College and football that is the today. Of Alabama and winning SEC champions. It's the island of misfit toys. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand that. Can they survive those first four games? Pro football Two today. To this franchise. They are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash. In game live, you can all take the access. Points. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In game go. live, prime time. I'm going a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. The morning after. Now that preseason has come to a close as we get ready for the regular season when it comes to the weekly handicap of NFL games. From carrying it over from the preseason to now is that pretty much ignore everything that you saw in the preseason. There's not too much that you should take and carry from there to there. I was out with another guy who said, oh man, he's he was a Jets fan. And he assured me that they're going to go 500. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. How about... Not only winning 8-3, but over the course of this series, Donnie, putting up 22 runs to just three for the Blue Jays. They shut them out twice. They absolutely dog-walked this team over three games, who, by the way, entered just being swept by the Rays for four and having lost six, I believe, uh, in a row. What an embarrassment here. Only on Sports Grid. It is game week in college football. The full week one slate just a few days away. It starts on Thursday night. A couple of ranked teams in action, even on Friday, and then a glorious Saturday of college football awaits. Connor O'Gara, a national football columnist from Saturday Down South, joins us here on the morning after to set the stage for it all. Connor, thank you so much for taking the time to join us on this Tuesday on the morning after. Ben, it's good to be here. I got a question for you. Um, when you take your, your runs around the great city of New York and you're wearing your Nebraska hat, what have the vibes been like these yeah. last couple of days? Because I can't imagine they've been very good. Connor, it was incredible to see. I was moving this weekend, and on Sunday, I was wearing my Nebraska hat, walking around New York City, and I saw one Husker fan across the street. I'm carrying my coffee table from place to place, and he looks at me and just shakes his head. He goes, I've never been this down bad before in my life. And I was like, I hear you, man, and I'm the one moving right now. That is the sentiment for Nebraska Cornhusker fans all across not just New York City, Connor, but the country, maybe even internationally, after the Dublin debacle that they saw on Saturday afternoon. Up 11 in the third quarter. Scott Frost decides, hey, let's try a surprise, surprise onside kick, and it backfires immediately. Nebraska loses their opening game of the season. Booked as a 12-and-a-half-point favorite against Northwestern. Scott Frost is now 5-21 and 21 in one-score football games. Nebraska has lost seven straight games, all decided by single digits. That is now a new record in the history of major 
college football. So, Connor, the seat in Lincoln is scalding hot. If you were Nebraska athletic director, Trev Alberts, what would you do with Scott Frost? I would send him packing. I would thank him for reducing that buyout and agreeing to a restructured deal, thinking that he could somehow be the 2022 version of Jim Harbaugh. I would say, you're gone. I'm going to find my guy because that's what you have to do when you're an athletic director. And when you're in year five, and that's, I, I can't figure out which is the most stunning stat right there. And I know the stat that everybody had thrown out there on Reddit was that Scott Frost could win 50 games in a row and he would still have a worse record yep. than Bo Pelini. That's where we're at with this entire thing. The, I think yep. the, the, the six and 18 against the big 10 West is truly alarming because when everybody said, well, his path to relevance is so easy because he's in the big 10 West to have won one fourth of your Big Ten West games in year five is truly stunning to me. It's, as bad as 15 and 30 overall is, as bad as it is to be five and 21 in one score games. Oh, by the way, he has yet to be an AP top 25 team because those are usually led by coaches who have a clue of what to do in the last two minutes of a football game. That to me is the most stunning thing that he is six and 18 against the Big Ten West. He's going to be gone. I would be very surprised if Matt Campbell wasn't the, the number one candidate to take over mm. uh, in Lincoln at the end of the season, but we'll wait and see what Trevor what Trev Albert has in mind. October 1st is a big, de big deadline for Scott Frost and some of those contract buyouts and clauses that would lessen the salary in what Nebraska would have to pay him out. He might be co coaching a lame duck season here at the moment so we'll pay attention and follow that very 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 hot seat in lincoln nebraska now for scott frost elsewhere though connor in the conference that you cover most closely the sec in action week zero vanderbilt on the road off the mainland in the hawaiian islands puts up 63 points against hawaii they cover easily as a nine and a half point favorite and at the moment vandy is the nation's top offense now we don't overreact necessarily to week zero, but Connor, in the second year now under Clark Lee, do you believe the Commodores can at least be a pesky team within the SEC this season? I've been saying it forever that Vandy is not a continental United States type of team. They needed to get off the mainland to really find their mojo. And boy, did they ever in that third quarter against oh, Hawaii. Wow. I mean, look, they are, uh, they are in a very tough spot in sec play they're still trying to win their first sec game in the 2020s decade that's that's what we're talking about here i think mike wright makes them more interesting i think the vandy mm -hmm. quarterback is a really great leader and he's somebody that they can actually kind of build around a little bit not the typical type of athlete that they usually get coming through those doors and he's going to be fun to watch he's going to make some plays i still don't think they're going to win an sec game I still think that they're going to hit the under. I know you're very invested no, in that. Over. You're very no. invested. In that. Look, 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 look. <laughs> Everybody's saying, and my guy Dari Noak is saying the same thing. He's like, I got Vandy starting off 4 0. I'm like, Dari, first of all, nobody gets out of DeKalb, Illinois, and, and, and comes out alive. Okay. So that Northern <laughs> Illinois game against the Mac Champs, okay. Rocky Lombardi, yep. former Michigan State quarterback, yep. Big Ten Ben knows all about it. They're not oh, winning no. that game. They're not beating Wake Forest. I know they don't have Sam Hartman. They still have eight starters back on offense from a team that won 11 games last year. All right. This isn't exactly a walk in the park. That Hawaii team is going to be left for dead. They, they might go 0 and 12 this year. It might be that bad for them. They might be the worst team in FBS. Not taking anything away from the fighting Mike Wrights. And we know, as Clark Lee said, Vandy's well on its way to being the most, the, the best team in college football. They're well on their way. But no, I don't want to overreact to a week one performance or a week zero performance like that. Listen, the market disagrees with you strongly because when I bet the over on Vandy's win total of two and a half, it was plus 145 before kick on Saturday evening in the Hawaiian Islands. It came down to just even money, plus 100. Myself and Darinoka, big time on the Vanderbilt Commodores win train this year. I'm just thinking maybe, maybe there's a chance. All right, Connor O'Gara, two days away from the start of week number one, a huge Thursday night in college football. The backyard brawl is back in our lives. A Big Ten opener in West Lafayette between Penn State and Purdue. And Tennessee, one of the nation's best offenses a season ago, opens up their campaign in 2022 as more than a five-touchdown favorite on Rocky Top against Ball State. What can we expect, Connor, from the Volunteers and that Josh Heupel offense this season? 
this will be a really good time to watch this offense if you kind of tune them out in the latter half of 2021 or maybe you just tuned in for the bowl game. And if you tuned in for the bowl game against Purdue, which <laughs> depending on who you ask, um, the split decision on the winner of that football game, my guy Paul Feinbaum More says that Tennessee victorious. won it. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, I do think that Tennessee is going to be phenomenal to watch this year on the offensive side of the ball. They have potential to have the number one offense in college football. And I realize Ohio State still exists. I realize Alabama still exists. They had a top 10 offense in the country last year, despite the fact that Hendon Hooker wasn't their QB1 to start off the year. Joe Milton somehow won that starting job. So you look at the pieces that they're returning. Cedric Tillman's one of the best five receivers in college football. They have a loaded backfield with Jalen Wright, with Jabari Small. They return four starters in the offensive line. They expect big things out of Bruce McCoy, the USC transfer, Jalen Hyde's breakout candidate. I'm going on and on and on. Tennessee's that good offensively. I don't know if they're going to stop a soul on defense, maybe bet the over, but they're going to be a fun team to watch. They're a great, they're a great way to kind of kick off um, you know, the week one slate on Thursday night, yeah. being able to see that offense in action. I think they cover that spread against Ball State, even if it's a little bit of a slow start for the passing game and Hendon Hooker's got a little bit too much juice and he's overthrowing guys a la Joe Milton. Tennessee team total overs, certainly going to be an area I look early and often in this college football season. The Vols were the only offense in the regular season last year against that vaunted national championship Georgia defense to score more than two touchdowns. They put up 17 points. 17 is an interesting number for the Georgia Bulldogs in their season opener on their path to repeat as national champions. A top 15 tilt in Atlanta against number 11, Oregon. The Dogs come in ranked number three in the preseason AP poll. And Connor, only in college football, could a top 15 tilt between number three in the country taking on number 11 feature a 17 and a half point spread. Should Georgia be this large of a favorite against Oregon? Yeah, they, they should. And, and I'm going to be there uh, at Mercedes-Benz Stadium this weekend, really looking forward to it. I think Georgia's offense could struggle a little bit out of the gate. Everybody knows Dan Lanning facing his former team. The way that this storyline has set up is really fascinating. It's still Bo Nix on the other side of the ball. I've seen this movie. I've seen Bo Nix lose to Georgia three different times. And I, see, I watched his offense average 10 points in those games. And he averaged 4.99 yards per attempt. I have no faith that Bo Nix is all of a sudden going to flip the switch and become this standout star quarterback. And I know they've got pieces back on the offensive line. They return their entire offensive line. And it's Oregon. You expect them to be able to do some things offensively. But I still think that Georgia's got dudes on that defense. they got an All-American at every level of that defense coming back, even though they lost so much talent from that historically dominant group. I think Georgia wins that football game and kind of has that third quarter reminder of, oh, yeah, we're one of three teams that can actually win a national championship this year. And even though we do have yep. questions, we do have things to figure out. I think Stetson Bennett puts his foot on the gas in the third quarter, and we see Georgia kind of take off, and they cover that 17 and a half. The Dogs still the third best price, plus 350 to win a national championship, minus 550 in the preseason SEC East odds, and still booked at minus 160, a favored number to get back into the college football playoff. The preseason national championship favorites, unsurprisingly, the number one team in the country entering 2022, the Alabama Crimson Tide. And when you look at the week one line for Nick Saban and the Tide, it's 42 and a half against the reigning Mountain West champs in Utah State, who played last week in week zero, did not cover against UConn, but still won by double digits. Connor, we know the story by now. Nick Saban, a perfect 15 and 0 in season openers, straight up during his time as the head coach in Tuscaloosa. 14 and 1 against the spread, and they're often double digit spreads in favor of Alabama. Why is Nick Saban so good at getting his team ready to go from the very start of a college football season? Let's think about this. The greatest coach of all time getting eight months to prepare for a matchup. You think he's going to be at a disadvantage? No, he's just not. Preparation is the name of the game for Nick Saban. They're going to be prepared. The fact that they actually got to watch Utah State in a week zero matchup feels unfair. Tough. It really does. It feels like, oh, wait, they get to see the tendencies. And because this was a team that ranked 113th in the country in percentage of returning production, the great set that Bill Connolly puts together every single year, Nick Saban was probably telling his team, look, they finished in the AP Top 25 last year. Also, they're very likely to take a, a step back this year. I don't think that they cover minus 41 and a half, though. I think it's more like a 38-point game. 
I'm not saying that it's going to be particularly close, but maybe a little bit of a foot off the gas down the stretch because they have Texas next week. Let's not forget that. Yep. They want to make sure that they're ready to go. That's a game that's going to be early in the day. You don't want guys dealing with cramping or anything like that. I think they they call off the dogs a little bit earlier in that game. I think it's a big Jameer Gibbs game in the opener. The Georgia Tech transfer is going to be so fun to watch. Could have 2,000 scrimmage yards this year playing against a lot of drop eight coverage with everybody determined to stop Bryce Young. I think this is a, a day in which the starters are pulled pretty early in the second half. And maybe Alabama only wins like a, you know, a 52 to 14 type of game. And they don't cover minus 41 and a half. A Bama brunch in Austin week number two against Texas. And right now the tide booked as a 17 and a half point road favorite quickly here, Connor, a team, both you and I are very high on the Utah Utes starts their year on the road in the swamp as a road favorite in Gainesville laying two and a half points. How do you break down this matchup between the Utes and the Gators? Give me the Utes. Uh, all in on Utah, all in on Cam Rising, Tavion Thomas, that, that Utah defense, which lost Devin Lloyd, I think still has enough pieces back to be able to frustrate that Florida offense, force Anthony Richardson to make some mistakes. That's the big thing he has to cut down on this year. He had an interception every 13 throws. I think Utah wins that game. It's a hard-fought game, but I think Utah wins that game in the swamp, more like a one-touchdown type of game. Florida fans are encouraged, but Utah is still able to come away with a win, keep the Pac-12 playoff chances alive. And that's what we like. Utah, CFP plus 600 on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Connor O'Gara, a national football columnist for Saturday Down South. Thank you for your time. It's great previewing actual games with you for college football. More TMA up next. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game oh, live man. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yeah. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Disappointing because of the lack of offense in times, including striking out a ton. The highest K rate against righties all year long in Major League Baseball at nearly 27% in the last month. The second highest at 26%. Now, Frankie Montas has not gone over his strikeout prop today of six and a half since joining the Yankees, but it's plus money against the highest striking out team in all of MLB over six and a half. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. I do not know who is laying minus 280 on this over. You always get into that notion where when you're an upper echelon team, like 
national championship SEC team. All you do is reload four and five star players on the defense. I'm not all that worried. You do get Stetson Bennett back this year. A guy that won the national championship. And I think most Georgia fans, I say this facetiously, actually wish he would just move on, transfer, or retire at this point. <laughs> Only on Sports Grid. Rounding out our number one, the morning after live here on this Tuesday on Sports Grid and Sirius XM Channel 159, the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM and all across the Sports Grid Network. I am Ben Stevens. A big day around the National Football League. We're under 10 days away, nine to be exact, from the start of the 2022 NFL regular season. At the conclusion of this Tuesday in the NFL, it will officially be game week. Training camp coming to a close already. But today is a big day because it's the 53-man roster cut line that you need to hit. So by the end of today, rosters will be solidified as teams start their journey in to the regular season. And it was interesting yesterday to get some news about a roster for one specific NFL organization, the San Francisco 49ers. It's Trey Lance's team, as he's about to embark on his second year as an NFL quarterback. But Jimmy Garoppolo is back now, officially, for San Francisco. So who's the better quarterback? What's the best option for San Fran at QB? Is it Trey Lance or Jimmy G? We ask you that and fade the public. I think I kind of just rhymed there, by the way. What's the better option for San Fran at QB? Is it Trey Lance or Jimmy G? (laughs) That was fun. All right, here we go. Fade the public poll. We asked you, who's the better quarterback on the 49ers roster? Trey Lance or Jimmy Garoppolo? And look at what the public has to say. Nearly 61% of this fade the public poll at SportsGrid TV on Twitter thinks that Jimmy Garoppolo is the better quarterback for San Francisco that maybe Jimmy G should be the starter up in the Bay for the Niners. Because again, it is very interesting putting this all into context. The Niners traded up in the 2021 NFL Draft to select Trey Lance at number three overall. They want him to be the future, but they're not going to go through the growing pains of a young quarterback in the National Football League. Their roster is too talented. The win total is nine and a half, and the over is juiced at minus 160. Plenty more around San Francisco's situation at QB in hour number two. That comes your way here on Sports Grid following a sports news update from Alex Vassalos. 